this morning in my devotion time I was reading uh, Pastor Charles Spurgeon he was talking about the love of the father and I thought Lord my, you know and my mom I'm watching my mom um, you know and I, I'm just being honest with the church I believe I'm watching you know my mom's journey is coming to an end I really believe that in my heart the Lord's preparing the family Lord, forgive me if I'm wrong. I, I don't mean to speak that, but I'm just saying I, I think God is good enough to prepare us as a loving father. And um, and that was the, the message that I got my devotion this morning was not so much, of course, my heart's going to be broken, Lenore, but none of us know what's going to happen tomorrow. We don't know. We don't know. Daddy's carrying a heavy load, and, and Mom's sick, and Times are hard, and we don't know what our government, what in, the, what in the world's going on out there in Washington. We don't. But our Father, Amen, keeps us. And if He is all of those things, why should I worry? Why should I fret? If He knows every sparrow that falls, my Heavenly Father loves me much more than a sparrow. That's how can we can praise Him in the midst of turmoil. That's how we praise Him in the midst of our sickness. When we, have, uh, when we don't understand everything. Amen. When we come to the house and we don't understand everything, we praise Him anyways. Our circumstances don't change our God. Amen. He is a great, great God. Don't let your perspective change in who He is. Amen. Don't let it change because He's a great, great God and He's able to keep us tonight. Amen. Y'all want to do another song? You want to move yeah, on? I'll do another song, then we'll, we'll just uh, have prayer and preach. Okay, he's going to have prayer and preach. Let's do an old one so we everybody can sing together. I understand. Okay, we got a whole lot of stuff that these.
sweet presence of, of God here Sunday night, and uh, it, it was this, it was beautiful. As Sister Lenore said, it was, yes. and uh, uh, they did a great job. They worked hard on it, and, and their efforts with God's hand upon it. Amen. Took care of it. Amen. Right. Amen. God, God's uh, God's message was sent out that night. I'm, I'm sure we didn't get anybody to come to the altar. That's all right. But that don't matter. That's right. that don't matter. That seed, yes. that seed yes. was planted Amen. right there. Right. And who knows? Yes. Who knows? They might be here. They might be here this Sunday. That's right. You never know. All we gotta do is do what God would have us to do. Right. Amen. Uh, uh, we're gonna go to the Lord in prayer now. Who has a request on the heart they'd like to lift up this time? Well, you know, I, uh, uh, Smith for Caleb, my grandson, about the medicine. And I just want to thank the Lord that um, so far he hasn't had any side effects. So, yeah. just, I mean, <coughs> we have to take medicine. I just thank the Lord for that. Amen. It was an that could have, he could have had. And I just thank the Lord, you know, for uh, Sammy. Uh, you know, I haven't heard anything that he's gotten worse or anything. Mm. So, just thank the Lord for that, too. Praise yeah. the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Anybody else? We keep mm -hmm. my sister and sister in law in your prayers. Yeah. Call him Candy's sister in law. The sister and sister in law. We have oh. our, call your sister in law is, um, is mm -hmm. Patty. They've been oh, over over six months, haven't they? Yeah. Oh, okay. And then his sister has some, some work done, and we're waiting for results there. Yeah. But uh, And also, call his brother. His name is Danny. Put him on your prayer, prayer list for salvation. Talks about the Lord. He has a desire for the things of God. And we really believe he just doesn't have understanding on how to come to God. Yeah. And so Holly does all that he can do, and we every time we're around him. But just remember Danny too, if you would. Amen. Remember Danny. Thank the Lord. He'll, he'll take he'll take God's hand. Amen. 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 Continue to remember my family. There's a lot of lost loved ones. Amen. Amen. Remember that. As well as all of the sick. Amen. So many sick people. Amen. Amen. There are. There are. Anybody else? Uh, remember my friend that has uh, ALS. Mm -hmm. She has not sober home, but she's she's gone. She's in West Virginia with her family and going to try to stay there. I don't know how she's managing it, but both her sons are doctors, so I imagine they're helping. Mm -hmm. uh, also remember Greg Rossi. He's the one I requested prayer for. Yes, Sunday morning that he has terminal cancer. Mm -hmm. Let me remember this one. Yes, Bonnie. Remember my family. Amen. Amen. Remember this. Pray for me. I'm still not well. Amen. Amen. You've had this stuff a long time, haven't you? Uh, I've been in bed two weeks. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, we praise the Lord. Uh, you can't explain it. It's just that good. Well, you know, there's some people saying that it's going around a, a second go round now, and uh, so uh, you know, they, they now that in the name of Jesus, Amen. 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 Uh, but anyway, uh, just pray for all the ones that are sick, the ones that are not here tonight for whatever reason. We pray for those the ones that are traveling. Christy, I think, is down in Morrisville. Remember her as she comes back. And uh, uh, anybody else? Remember our service tonight. Amen. Pray for the Lord. Just touch cleanse. Amen. Sunday Amen. Morning. And Sunday morning, yes. All the churches in the area. You know, Christmas is uh, traditionally, and it's supposed to be, a happy time yeah. in most of our lives. But you know, sometimes through all this, this hustle and bustle and stuff, people get down. <clears throat> people get stressed out. People are not as happy as they should be. Right. They should, they're, not, they're not focused on what the real reason of Christmas is. Amen. You know, the birth of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And uh, we, we lose track of that sometimes and, uh, as we hurry around through this. But uh, we should pray for those that maybe don't, don't have the joy in their hearts that, that some of us do. And, uh, uh, anybody else at this time? Well, one of the gentlemen uh, customers are, of ours today came in and said that one of the boys from RCR, they used to work there, lived in Walmart, and took a, uh, went to his daddy's graveside. He was mm -hmm. a man with four children and shot himself in the head yesterday. Oh, goodness. And they found him on his dad's grave. Oh, goodness. And he's talking about uh, being a hard time mm -hmm. for people, uh, people without hope. Yeah. And, uh, and David said today, he said he left four children. Mm -hmm. So let's remember that family Amen. tonight. Amen, yes. They're dead in the state, I'm sure. I'm sure they are. Yeah. Goodness gracious. Yeah, there's always, there's, 
you know, like I say, there's, there's things that goes on in everybody's lives and, and stuff that, uh, that, you know, that's not pleasant. That's right. Christian or non-Christian out here, you know, if you're out there watching today, and uh, if, if 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 there's things going on in your life, uh, uh, and you don't know Jesus Christ, it's going to be a lot. It's going to be a lot harder on you. Right. But if you know Jesus Christ, you got shoulders you can lean on. Right. You got hands you can grab Amen. hold of, Amen. and they can help you through the bad times. And Christians, Amen. get ready because if you haven't experienced some bad times yet, you're going to. Amen. Amen. That's right. And. Uh, so just, just, just know that we serve a Savior today that we take care of anything that's in going on in your life today. If none of us, we're going to go to the Lord in prayer. Just by show of hands, I know we've all got things on our hearts and in our lives that we need to, to, to let Jesus speak. And now it's time to do that. Amen. So if you will, let's just bow our heads and go to the Lord in prayer. Our Heavenly Eternal Father, God, in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord, our Savior, dear Lord, we come to you today with a humble heart, with love in our hearts, and thanking you again for all that you do for us each and every day and i know lord sometimes we don't we don't show the, the thankfulness and the gratitude that that we should to you but lord father we're, we're human father and we pray that you would just just have your hand upon our lives so much that it just that your, your presence just pours out to and that we can share with other people well, lord we pray for each request to the night and there were several of us that are sick in body and father we ask you just to touch that uh, that body and turn it around, Father, and just heal that sickness, that illness. And Father, I know there's people out here today that they're just, um, they're just down to them. They're just, they're just low. They're, they don't have the joy in their heart that, that they should. And dear Lord, we ask you to just touch that heart and that, and that life and turn it around, Father. Set them back up on the mountaintop. And Lord, it's the ones that were spoken out tonight that, that are for salvation. The ones that don't know you, don't know you at all. Father, we ask you to touch that, that heart and that heart and life and turn around for you everlasting, everlasting to us. So, Lord, again, we pray for our service tonight and we pray for Brother Glenn, Father, give him the words to say that can, that can touch our hearts and lift us up and turn our lives around. And, Father, we will be eternally grateful for all that you do for us and for what you're going to do. Father, we thank you again. And, dear Lord, we, we are so grateful and thankful for this, for this time of the year. Father, the time of the year that you came to us, Father, in that lowly manger, and Father, it just came to take on the sins of this world, take on our sins, that we may too have an eternity in heaven with you. Lord, Lord, we pray again that you'll just be with us in this, this Sunday service, and Father, may, may your message and your will be, be shed Sunday morning throughout the land. And Father, we pray all this in your precious Son, Jesus' name. And everybody says, Amen. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Brother Colin, can you come forward and we'll take up the offering?
We would get up in the mornings and go out to work, go about to the store, everywhere, telling people, don't you know that even today, Jesus could return? Yeah, that's right. Amen. We would be a wonderful witness, wouldn't we? Amen. Come on, Pastor. All right. Lanny, well, turn this one off and this one on. I, I think this one's on. You're on. Okay, if you'd like to turn with me in the Bible tonight. I want to read a passage of Scripture out of 1 Peter. <coughs> and I'll be reading chapter 1, 15 through 21. Thank you. Or 2 Peter, I'm sorry. <laughs> We want to get the right scripture. That's right. Amen. Yes. Okay. We'll begin at verse 15. <laughs> Moreover, I will endeavor that you may be able after my decease to have these things always in remembrance. For we have not followed cunningly devised fables when we made known unto you the power and coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. But were eyewitnesses of his majesty. For he received from God the Father honor and glory when there came such a voice to him from the excellent glory This is my beloved Son, in whom I am well pleased. And this voice which came from heaven we heard when we were with him in the holy mount. We have also a more sure word. A prophecy wherein do you do well that you take heed as unto a light that shineth in a dark place until the day dawn and the day star rise in your hearts knowing this first that no prophecy of the scripture is of any private interpretation for the prophecy came not in old time by the will of man but holy men of God spake as they were moved by the Holy Ghost. Amen. Let's pray. Father, we love you and thank you for your word. You, Humbly ask you for your guidance this evening. We ask, Lord, that you would touch us. We ask, God, that you would just anoint us to preach and teach your word this evening. Open our ears to hear what the Spirit is saying to the church. And we ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Peter said that the word of prophecy, which which I take to mean not just <coughs> prophecy itself, but nearly the, the largest portion of the Bible is actually prophecy. He said it's a more sure word of prophecy, wherein we do well that we take heed as unto a light that shines in a dark place. How many knows that darkness is our enemy? Amen. That's right. Amen. Amen. And, and I'll say this with with the pure sense of the word and not the insulting sense of the word. Right. We're all ignorant about many things. Right. But to be ignorant about the word of God is the worst place we can be. Amen. Right. Amen. 
Hello? That's right. right. That's the worst thing that can happen to an individual. It's for them to be neglectful of the words of God that He has given us, that that word would shine into our hearts and show us where we're at. I think if you go through the prophecies of the Bible, then you could actually <coughs> pinpoint to some close degree exactly where we are right now in God's program. Yeah. You can go to the book of Daniel and you can see in the book of Daniel exactly where the church is located at this present time. Daniel saw it until he saw a stone cut out without hands detach itself from a mountainside and smote that image upon his feet. And the whole image crumbled and become like the dust of the summer threshing floor. And that stone which smote those feet and that image became a great mountain yeah. that filled the whole earth. Yeah. And that is what we term and talk about when we're talking about the millennial kingdom of Christ will actually be covering the entire globe one day. The wolf and the lamb will lay down together. The child will play upon the hole of the ass. The cows and the lions will dwell together. He said, nothing shall hurt or destroy Come on, amen. in all amen. my holy mountain. Amen. And so when we look at the word, the, the prophecies of the Bible, and I'm not going to be preaching on prophecy. I want to be preaching on light tonight. Amen. When people walk in darkness, they stumble. Amen. They fall. And not only that, they're easily led astray. Amen. Amen. You take people that are living in darkness and you can just about sell any lie to them. But you take people that know this word. Amen. That know the word of God. It's hard to lead them astray. That's right. Amen. The song that said thy word is a lamp unto my feet. A light to my path. Yes. Thy word, O oh God. He's talking about that I find my way through this life. Amen. Through the word of God. Amen. That's how I do it. That's right. I don't depend upon the radio, the television, or books that I read. I depend upon the word of God. Amen. God's word doesn't change because somebody writes a book and says it's this way. Come on, man. They amen. need to change their thinking amen. the way God, the amen. book says. Amen. Can you say amen? amen? So I'm talking about light. When we walk in the light, we are sure-footed. Knowing where we are going, it's like that lamp. In 1 John, he says this, verses one or five through seven. This then is the message which we have heard of him, and declare unto you that God is what? God is light. You know, we talk about God being love, God being a spirit. But ever have you ever thought about God being light? Right. And in him right. is no darkness at all. Right, no very if we say that we have fellowship one with another and walk in darkness, we lie right. and do not the truth. But if we walk in the light as he, amen. As he, amen. As he is in the light, amen. we have fellowship one with another and the blood of Jesus amen. Christ, his son, cleanses us from all sin. Amen. I'm talking about the light. We must keep in mind that when John wrote that, he's addressing the church. 
That's right. He's not addressing sinners. Amen. He's addressing the church. He says, my little children. Amen. He's talking about church people. Amen. And he's telling church people these things. He's saying if we walk in the light as He is in the light, the blood of Jesus will cleanse us from all our failures and Amen. sins if we Amen. walk in the light. If we say that we have no sin, and this is the hard part, if we say that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves. That's right. And the truth is not in us. That's right. This is the one thing that really bothers a lot of people That's right. in church. Because we are prone to think that everything about us is perfect. No. No. That we don't have any faults whatsoever. But the Bible says we have sin. Right. Now I'm going to show you some scripture here in a moment. That will prove what I'm talking about. That's right. Paul called this in the book of Hebrews the weight and the sin which does so easily beset us. So walking in the light is walking in the understanding that you still got an old nature Amen. that's prone to Amen. sin. Amen. That you still have this downward pull in your life that's pulling you. Day after day, hour after hour, yeah, this strength of this pull in you is the old remnants of the Adamic nature that one day God's going to deliver us from this house of clay. Amen. Amen. People still have that nature within them. Paul's revelation of the indwelling sin nature. I want us to go to, Sherry, would you put up Romans 7 up there? And there's a lot of controversy about when Paul wrote Romans 7. And I've heard it put like this, which makes more sense to me than anything else. Paul wrote six chapters before that. So why would it be any different for him? He was a saved man when he wrote 1 through 6. He's a saved man when he wrote 7. Amen. Hello? That's right. So, in, in that chapter, Paul is talking about the sin nature. Verse 7. And he's talking about the law. He said, what shall we say then? Is the law of sin? God forbid. Nay, I had not known sin, but by the law. For I had not known lust, except the law said, thou shalt not covet. But sin... Taken occasion by the commandment wrought in me all manner of concupiscence. For without the law, sin was dead. For I was alive without the law once, but when the commandment came, sin revived and I died. And the commandment which was ordained to life, I found to be unto death. For sin, taken occasion by the commandment, deceived me, and by it slew me. Wherefore, the law is what? Holy. Holy. And the commandment is what? Holy. 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 And just and good. Was then that which is good made death unto me? God forbid. But sin... Somebody say that. Amen. But sin that it might appear sin, working death in me by that which is good, that sin by the commandment might become exceedingly sinful. For we know that the law is spiritual, but here's my problem. I'm carnal, sold under sin. Now let me tell you something about the Apostle Paul. The Apostle Paul was first who? Saul of Tarsus. Saul of Tarsus was the man that for some reason thought he was God's instrument in destroying the church. Right. He didn't believe that Jesus was the Messiah. He thought Jesus was an imposter. He thought the resurrection story was a farce. Mm -hmm. 
He thought that the Christianity was a false religion. He said, I was a Pharisee of the Pharisees. He said, I was in the law, blameless. Here was a man that was walking in darkness. He thought that he was doing God a favor because he was destroying Christianity. He was, he was even on his way to Damascus with letters to bring people back and to imprison them and compel them to blaspheme. This was Paul's mission in life was to stamp out Christianity. Here was a man that was walking in complete darkness thinking that he was walking in the light. But something happened to him on the road to Damascus. You know what it was? He met the light. When the light shone from heaven like the noonday sun, the Bible said it blinded him. And Jesus spoke to him and said, Saul, Saul, why are you persecuting me? Saul said, who are you? I am Jesus, yep. whom you are persecuting. How was Paul persecuting Christ? Because when you touch his church, you're touching Jesus. Right. Mm -hmm. He said, when you touch my church, you are fighting against the prince. You are fighting against me when you touch my church. And that light was so bright that it blinded him for three days. But something began to work in this man's life. God began to bring him out of darkness into the light of the gospel of Christ. God began to show him things that nobody else had put their finger on and understood. Not even the other apostles. Paul talked about all the things he had done, but he found out that Saul of Tarsus could not do the will of God and walk in darkness. And God brought him into the light. He thought he was doing God's service. He thought he was righteous. He thought he was favored of God. Now I'm going somewhere with this. Y'all hang on a minute. Saul's encounter with the law, with the light, was the thing that changed his life. His encounter with the light is what brought him to where he was. He had met his maker. And the light began to shine in his heart. The light that broke in on Saul of Tarsus was brighter than anything he had ever seen. And in time, it was going to open up to him the things which he had been kept secret in the councils of God. He saw at once that the church was the body of Christ. Yeah. Did you understand, folks, that there's people in church today that still don't know? That's true. They still don't understand that we are one body in Christ Jesus. Right. That we belong to one another. That's right. There's still people that bicker and fight. There's still people that sow discord among brothers and sisters and divide one another from one another. Because they don't understand. They're walking in darkness and they need to be brought into the light of who we are. Amen. There's people that praise for things that God has already done. Yeah. <laughs> they pray and pray and pray. Oh, God, do this, do that. If God would just break it with the light in their heart, they would see and understand that God had done that 2,000 years ago. Amen. That's right. Amen. But they still walk in darkness because they walk in lack of understanding of what the Bible says. God's not going to change this word for anybody just because they don't understand it. He wants them to come into the light of what this Bible is teaching you and I. Amen. Amen. 
The light of the glorious gospel of Christ. That's right. Oh, I'm telling you folks, to walk in darkness doesn't mean that you're out here stumbling in the dark. No. You can sit right in the church and be praying for the very things that God gave you 2,000 years ago. Right. God, give me the victory. Oh, God, give me the victory. He's already given us the victory. 2,000 years ago, He gave us the victory. Right. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Why do we pray for something God's already given us? <laughs> because we don't understand. We don't see what God has done for us. Right. We need that light to shine in our hearts tonight to help us to see. Why do we come to church? Do we come to church just to be a number in the church? Do we come to church out of obligation? Why do we come to church? Can I shed a little light on the reason we're here? We're here to be worshipers of God. And we're here to lift up the name of Jesus. To be a testimony to that world out there. We need to learn how to walk in the light Amen. as He is in the light. I'm walking in the light of victory today. Yes. Amen. Because of what He did for me 2,000 years ago. That's right. You see, I've already died. That's right. That's right. Amen. I've been crucified. Hello. Amen. You yes. preach that in some That's churches right. and they'll look at you so strange. That's right. I've already died. That's right. Don't you know that those that have been baptized into Jesus Amen. have been baptized into His death? Amen. Hello? That's right. We've already died. Now we've been buried with Him by baptism. And if baptism means anything, it means being buried with Him. Amen. Amen. And guess what? When you come up out of that water, of life. Amen. you know what that symbolizes? Yes. That now you're walking in newness of life. Newness of life. Amen. Amen. The old man is dead. He's gone. Amen. The old man has been buried. Amen. And now we're walking in newness of life. All the light of this glorious gospel shine into our hearts. And we'll quit talking negative about things. We'll quit talking negative about our walk with God. I am Paul right. saw us when that light shined in his heart. He began to see us as victorious in Christ Jesus. That's right. He began to see that the church can never be defeated. That's right. He said, I am persuaded that neither light nor death, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor <laughs> things present, nor things to come, nor any other creature shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is where? In his Son Christ. Hallelujah. Amen. Oh, I hope this light is beginning to shine in everybody's Amen. heart. Amen. That's why people talk defeat so many times. They don't understand. That's right. They don't realize and understand. Paul said we are to yield our members as instruments of righteousness. Right. He said, don't let sin reign in your mortal body. That's right. That you should obey its lust. That's right. We've all got that old sin nature in us. But he said, here's what you do. You don't yield to it. That's right. Crucified. Amen. Hello? Amen. You don't yield to it. That's right. He said, I want you to know this is the light of the gospel. John said, if any man says he doesn't have sin, <coughs> he's a liar. That's right. Mm -hmm. You do have a sin nature in you. That's right. But you don't have to let it defeat us. Amen. Amen. Can you say amen? amen. It doesn't have to defeat me. That's right. That's right. He said, don't let sin reign in your mortal body. That's right. <coughs> then he goes on another place and said, sin shall not have dominion, dominion Amen. over you. You know why? Because you're not under the law anymore. That's right. Grace. I don't know if the Gentiles have ever been under the law. No, I mean, you're not under the law. You're under grace. Amen. 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 And when that sin nature by some reason begins to exert itself, you take that to an altar of prayer and you bring it before God. That's right. God knows yeah, what happened in you. Yeah, he, right. knew, he knows what happened. That dormant spirit in you, that old, academic nature. 
amen, lying in there finally finds an expression, amen, it finds an expression every time it's a sin, amen, and you take that before the Lord like Paul said, he said, I don't know what's going on in me, the good I want to do, I don't do, and the evil which I don't want to do, I do, amen, what's going on in me, he said, I find a law in me, that law is in me, the law of sin and death, dragging me down, amen, but I found the cure, amen, the cure, amen, that I've found, amen, it's not the law, amen, it's Christ Jesus, the Lord, amen, the Spirit of God that God gives us, the grace of God to live above our circumstances. I use this illustration sometimes if y'all let me use it tonight. I remember Sherry and I, I remember the first time I saw a 747. <laughs> oh, it just went right over our house almost. We lived by the airport. Yeah. These things in the evenings would come in and they just looked like they were floating. Mm -hmm. They were so big. And this is years and years ago in the, in the uh, late 70s, I think it was, when we were there. And then these big jets were coming in. And I looked at that and I said, my God, how do they get something like that off the ground? But you know what it is? How they get these jets? Tons and tons of metal and seats and people. All of that. I couldn't tell you how much tons of 747 weighed, but I can tell you it's a whole salute. Yeah. How do they get this thing up in the air? It's the law. The principle. I can take this handkerchief and I let it go, it drops to the floor. You put a 747 up in the air and turn them engines off and I can promise you that thing's coming to the ground. Can you say amen? amen? It is the law of thrust and aerodynamics overcoming the law of gravity. And what God has put in your life is the law of the spirit of life. He has put in you to overcome the law of sin and death. That thing is bragging, bringing us down. Amen. There's another law in us. The law of life in Christ. Amen. Amen. That's Christianity. That's, it. Amen. That's what being a Christian is. It's being able to overcome the law of sin and death. That's right. Walking in the light. Hallelujah. Aren't you glad? Amen. Amen. So John's telling them, he said, don't even think this, that there's no sin in you. It's there. But you can overcome it by living in Christ. Amen. Amen. You don't have to let sin have dominion Amen. over you. Amen. Amen. Because you're not under the law anymore. That's right. You're under the grace of Christ. Amen. Amen. And He will lift you above yes, will. your circumstances. Amen. But you say, Brother Dan, I fell flat on my face. Oh, God, I have too. Amen. That's right. <coughs> I have. Yeah. yeah. I'm like David a lot of times where, where David said the people were saying of him, there is no help for him in God. <laughs> That's yeah. what David said in Psalms 3, I think yeah. it is. There is no help for him in God. But David out. said, Lord, you are the lifter up of my head. Yeah. Yes. When I learned as a Christian to look to him for my strength, I found the secret. That's right. That's yes. it. Amen. I found the secret yes. to an overcoming life. Always, yeah. always. Look to Him. You see, God give us the law that we might understand how sinful we are. That's right. Once we understand how sinful we are, mm -hmm. then we go look for a cure. That's right. How can I find a cure for this? How many knows what it is? Mm -hmm. You see, you never find the provision until you know you have a need. That's right. I have found out I cannot live above That's right. my thoughts. That's right. I can't live above the things that go and pass through my mind only by giving it to Christ. Amen. A lot of people have a problem with a dirty thought here and there. That's the devil's tactics. It is. Like shooting a dart at you. 
Try to implant something in your spirit, in your mind. Just like the old saying goes, you can let a bird fly over your head, but don't let it come down there and build a nest in your hair. Right, right. Is that right? That's right. You can't help it because he flies over your head. You can't help it because somebody asked me one time, said, Glenn, I'm having these awful thoughts. Just things that run through my mind. I said, well, you, you know, you're just like every other Christian. I know. They got the same problem you got. The thing about it is, you just got to reject it and go on. Don't entertain it. Amen. Amen. We're all subject to those things. Why? Because in us, every one of us sitting here tonight, there's an old Adamic nature that God wants to keep down and not let it express itself. But when it does, you've got provision. That's what John said. If we walk in the light, as he is in the light, hello? Yeah. We have fellowship one with another, and the blood of Jesus will cleanse us from all of our sin. Aren't you glad? Amen. Yes. How many is glad you're 747 tonight? Amen. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. I don't have any more. Let's all stand. Lord, we love you and thank you. How many love God's Word today? Amen. And I want to ask you this too. Do you want to be more involved with the Word? I do. I, I want to know more and more of God's Word. We thank you, Father, for this service tonight. We thank you, Lord, for this message. Thank you for giving us the liberty in our spirits to preach tonight. Thank you for opening our ears to hear what the Spirit is saying to the church. Thank you, Father, for your loving kindness for everyone that come out to be with us tonight. Thank you, Lord. We give you praise and honor, and we will worship you with all of our hearts. Bless Sunday morning service. God in Jesus' wonderful.